My name is Dr. Abdul Manan. Today I want to talk about lower limb rehabilitation robot for your patients. So um, this would be of my objective in my today's presentation. Um, I would discuss about my time schedule, study modeling and analysis, describe what I'm studying. And I would skip my these two portions, uh, simulations and conclusions, because this is a continuous presentation. So I would describe uh, these things in my later stage when I would conclude my uh, study. Mm, uh, I must mention at this stage that the study I'm going to present is taken, is basically I have just prepared these presentations. These are not my contributions. Uh, this, uh, the whole theory which we are going to discuss uh, is taken from the book Feedback Control of Dynamic Bipedal Robot Locomotion, uh, written by Eric Ross Wester Westerveld and Jesse W. Grizzle. Kristen Shavalari, I'm sorry my for my pronunciation, Yun Hun Choi, and Benjamin Morris. This is the goal of my study. Um, both legs connected and linked under activated control for lower limb rehabilitation robot. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And my objectives are to, uh, my, my basic objective is to design re rehabilitation robot for paraplegia patients and I would then implement it with, uh, and execute my study uh, with the robot. So uh, these are the thing and these are the study and these are the study these are the topics which we are gonna study not today but in the schedule I would describe later. So this is my schedule. I am going to study dynamics in January. Which it is we have already discussed this about uh, the uh, we have already discussed and uh, uh, today I, I would definitely give an overview then in the two uh, uh, weeks I would study the impact modeling and then in the next uh, month I would describe the point care maps for walking and in, in March I would describe um, weight shifting and balancing and balancing that is zero dynamics in March and in April, I would study the within stride feedback controller for walking. And in the next week, I would study event based feedback controller for walking. And in the June, I would um, yeah, I would uh, simulate. I would try simulate what I have gained from these things. And uh, with the simulation, I would go for experimentation. And uh, yeah. And in the same time, I would uh, study, uh, I would start writing my paper. Uh, after getting the results from experiments, I would put them in my paper. And it would be ready for publication. This is the schedule which is I'm going to have, um, which I'm or I'm, which I'm also. Uh, this is the schedule of my other project, uh, um, and this is this is not going to be part of our today's discussion. So um, the expected output from the study we are going to make is this. Um, you know, we are going to study the implementation of under activated control theory on lower limb exoskeleton robot. This, um, uh, at this stage, it sounds quite uh, simple and it sounds like everybody has done this, but if you go out, if you go and seek for um, literate, uh, if for any, paper or journals, you won't find none. Um, so we thought that it would be a good idea to study it and implement it. And this would be my another topic, which, I'm, which is not going to be part of our today's discussion. From today's dis uh, the expected uh, journal or mm, contribution or the research paper contribution from our today's study would be uh, journal in International Journal of Control and Automation Systems, and one uh, in, or one or International Journal of Precision Engineering Manufacturing Application. Oh, no. Sorry. Hello, Professor. Oh. Okay. Um. So that's what I'm going. That's what I'm going. I'm, I hope. 
So let's uh, get back to our topic, modeling and analysis of lower limb rehabilitation robot. So before going uh, before going to start before going to start our discussion this my discussion I would like to describe some basic hypothesis in walking and uh, why we are going to use under actuated uh, under actuation and point feed and yeah the main thing is very simple and it uh, otherwise it would be very complicated um so um Walking a robot gate and um, robot gate and impact hypothesis. So there are many different hypotheses for walking, uh, which are walking phase robot with point feet hypothesis, gate hypothesis for walking, or rigid impact model hypothesis. So these are the things: stance phase and double sport. These are the things which are the main things. I have already discussed in my previous discussion, so I would skip it. I just put it in in on the for the record, but I would not discuss it. So these are the hypotheses for the point feed. These are the hypotheses for walking, and these are the hypotheses for impact modeling. And in this second order system with impulse response, I have tried to show that um, how a system responds with this impulse input. And the main uh, point in this discussion is that the position after impact and before impact remains unchanged, but Velocity does. So that is the conclusion of this discussion. You can definitely go through these slides and find out if you want to. So let's go for dynamic dynamic modeling for walking. So let me put first um, now some notational symbols, some notations about uh, some notations we are going to use in our uh, study. This is um. um Position of the leg, which is uh, in this simple sense, which is uh, one leg is mm, behind and one leg is on the front. So in this this behind leg is de denoted by T one vertical component and its horizontal component. Gravity is downward. The front leg is denoted by P two vertical component, horizontal component, and the center of mass is P C M vertical component and horizontal. So these are the things. So in this uh, tangential force, normal force, um, definitely again horizontal component and vertical component again tangential force and uh, normal force. And in y one, this is again x one y one x two y two, and yeah, these are the things. Ah. Uh, Okay, so in the swing phase dynamic modeling, uh, it, the point is one leg is uh, is on the ground, is in contact with ground, and other leg is not. So we have one, two, three, four, and five legs, but we have one, two, three, and four actuators. It means we are underactuated, and also we have to control a position. So basically, we have to control it for the um, um, six outputs from four inputs. Definitely, it is underactuated. And uh, if we are moving on a 3D, then it would be four plus three. So, sorry, five plus three with only four actuators. So, uh, dynamic uh, swing phase dynamic modeling, I have already dis discussed in my previous presentation. I would just skip it. So, these are just so impact modeling. Uh, my today's main emphasis will be on that. And um, this um, is the main equation combines our inertial Coriolis uh, and gravitational matrices. Um, a matrix which is going to be multiplied with torque it can be it can be gains or something like that and this is the external applied force as an impulse so you're going to have uh, this basic dynamic modeling equation okay so it, it, what is qe qe is a 
and generalized coordinates q e and q dot for impact for impact and it also contains um, um, it also contains um, position of the um, position on the robot which we want to control so q e is basically a column vector with uh, joint uh, q s is related to stance phase q s is the uh, joint angles and p e which is any point on the robot so this is q e and uh, we are uh, uh, exter external impulse response uh, and delta f external represents the vector of external forces acting on the robot due to contact between the swing leg and the ground so what is this f e x t equals to it um, <clears throat> It is equal to the change in momentum after impact and before impact. That is external force. And uh, definitely it's, it is the integration of impulse from before impact and after impact. QE dot is the velocity just before the impact and, uh, and QE plus is the velocity after the impact. So what is QE uh, negative and QE dot negative? It is just QS is basically the joint angles before the impact and this gamma, I think it's gamma, no, it's psi, I guess it's a psi. E is a function of QS because any point on the robot, we can find it with the relation, with, with, the, uh, with the relation of QS. So it, again, this QE dot is just an identity matrix on the N cross N. And on the uh, this portion, it is just a partial fraction, which is basically uh, you can say that a slope or change in the rate of change, something like that. So how the position is changing. <laughs> so impact modeling continuous external force, uh, letting P2 is a function of QE denote the position of the end of the swing leg with respect to the initial frame. It follows from the principle of virtual work that external force is equal to applied force on the end of swing leg. And uh, E2, which is uh, before impact. What is E2? It is equal to the partial fraction of QE, which is basically kind of, um, you know, slope with respect to QE. So you can say velocity plus force, something like that. It's basically power, but um, yeah, kind of thing. So <clears throat> F2 is again the tangential and normal force at the end of swing leg. And this equ equation number 10 represents n plus two equations and n plus four unknowns. And the unknowns are QE dot plus, F2 tangential and normal. These unknowns can be obtained by solving using hypothesis or impact hypothesis number three. So we can say that E2, uh, which is QE negative, uh, function of QE negative, um, and plus QE dot equals to zero. Uh, what is Q? It is change, change. So velocity, um, you can say that is the, um, slope of P2, slope of P2 with respect to QE multiplied with QE equals to zero. So again, the, what are, these are the equations for um, yeah inertial and rate of change in velocities two that makes this thing, and this multiplied with this makes it zero as we have already seen. Just writing it so writing it in a more elaborative way we can do it and say it like this in q is evaluated as 11 which is here and let me show you the question number nine this is equation number 10 so we are using this equation so uh, how can we find this q e dot plus f2 using our knowledge so we are going to find this out using this delta and f2 and this and 
this delta F2 is equal to this one. We already know E2, we already know E2 dash, and that is just the transpose. And this is the E inverse, uh, we have already mentioned that, and partial fraction. And again, uh, delta negative or bar QE is equal to minus D E inverse E2 uh, dash, which is the transpose, and F2, delta F2, which we have already calculated, plus this. So uh, we can calculate the, these two things using these two relations. And then we get the coordinates of just after the impact and um, respectively just before the impact. And we can represent these coordinates like this. Where delta QS is just a rotation matrix and uh, delta QS double dot, QS, Q dot S is this one. Um, I would summarize my impact modeling in three points. First of all, impact modeling must be uh, checked at each impact. Um, so there are three conditions which needs to be checked. First one is the validity of the impact model uh, should be checked uh, at each impact upon evaluating equation number 18, which is this. It must be verified that normal force should be greater than zero and that tangential force should be um, the absolute of tangential force should be less than or equal to this, which is a frictional force. There is a mu s is assumed coefficient of static friction. So, in, and the third condition is that in stance leg uh, lifts from the ground without interaction, that is, letting um, horizontal and vertical component <clears throat> denote the position of the end effector of the end of the stance leg with respect to inertia frame it must be the case that this vertical position should be uh, uh, the partial fraction of it should be greater than zero the velocity of that vertical particular position should be uh, greater than zero with this thing where QE plus is determined from equation number 17. If any of these conditions is violated, then computed must computed post impact velocity is meaningless and appropriate action must be taken, such as stopping the simulation or redesigning a walking gate or redesigning of uh, uh, that is the that is the end of my today's presentation. Mm, I thank you very much for your time, and please subscribe to my channel and comment. I need your if you do not understand anything, please write me. I would love to describe it. Thank you.